Every time you looked at something, you thought, let me try and jip all this and take a shortcut. You understand? Every time you saw a party, you wanted to have a party. You look for a reason, but now all that has gone away. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Listen, you've got to. I'm sharing with you. There are some people maybe here this morning. You're not born again. Born again means you have to receive Jesus Christ. Listen, don't run after money. Don't run after fortune. Don't run after things. Women, don't run after men. They can only satisfy you this much. And men, don't run after women. They, can't, they can only satisfy you this much. Jesus satisfies you a whole lot more. You understand? Hallelujah. So if someone in your life has let you down and gone away, let them go. It's your opportunity to now gaze to Christ. I don't care where you're from, who you are, how many degrees you have. You could be boiling hot with all the degrees. You need Christ. Christ satisfies you. You understand? Oh, he's wonderful. Oh, wave your hands to the Lord and say he's wonderful. Hallelujah. Thank you. He's so good. He's so good. I said he's so good. Lift up your hands towards heaven and say he's so good. He's so good. So good to me. Hallelujah. Oh, I thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad I'm a Christian. <laughs> Woo, I'm glad I'm a Christian. I'm glad I'm born again. I'm just so glad. Hallelujah. Some people, when they go to bed, they can't even fall asleep. We have peace. Peace with God. We fear nothing. You understand? We don't fear the dark. We don't fear recession. We don't fear economy, the fluctuating economy. We don't fear what man can do to us. We fear the Lord. The Bible tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. We don't fear the devil. No, sir. We don't fear man. No. We don't fear nothing. See, the born again Christian, he fears nothing. He's a master of life. Hallelujah. A Christian is a master of life. That means he has the answers to all things. When he doesn't have a ready answer, he can engage his spirit man. Speak in other tongues, meditate on the word, and suddenly your heart is flooded with light. You know exactly what to do. You understand? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All oh, lift up your hands, wave it towards heaven. Say, dear Jesus, we just love you so much. We appreciate you. We honor you. Hallelujah. There's a, there's a song. I don't know if you guys know it. This is a simple one. I am glad I belong to Jesus. You know that one? Who knows it? Noki, help us. Give her a mic. I just can't get the... <laughs> I just can't get the pitch right. But it, 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 goes, it goes higher than what I'm singing it. But it's a simple song. It says, I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. Help it. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. Okay, stop. You got it now. Yeah. All of you, I'm not talking to her, I'm talking to you. You got it, right? Okay. We sing it now, right? Doesn't matter. You sing it from your heart. We're not here to put a show. We're people that love God, right? Okay, let's sing it. Go ahead. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I am glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. To my God. Okay, one more time. Are you getting it? You're getting better. 
You're getting better. Tell your neighbor you're getting better. All right, now I want you to sing it a bit louder, all right, so we can help her. Okay, that's, that's how the song goes. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I'm so glad I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. All right, simple. Let's go again. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am there. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my Lord. I am there. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I am dead. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I am dead. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Jesus. I belong to my God. I am dead. I belong to Jesus. I belong. Praise the Lord. All right, you may take your seat this morning. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is in the house. Amen. You love Jesus, right? Well, you learned a song. Thank you so much. You learned a song. Amen. Praise the Lord, Roxy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ta, 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 ta. Amen, amen, amen. Are you ready for the word? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I belong to Jesus. Oh, I'm so glad. I'm telling you. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. I want you to turn to Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9. And... Uh, Let's pick it up. I want to talk to you this morning about the prearranged life. That God has a prearranged life for you. You heard what I said? A prearranged life. Proverbs chapter 9, verse 9 says, Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Hmm? Whoever corrects a mocker invites insult. Whoever rebukes a wicked man incurs abuse. Do not rebuke a mocker or he will hate you. Now watch this. This is a big one. Rebuke a wise man and he will love you. Instruct a wise man and he will be wiser still. Teach a righteous man and it will add to his learning. You got that? I love that. I love that. Because, look, God's children are wise people. You understand? Turn around to someone and say, I'm wise. Say, I'm very wise. Now, you know what a wise person is. A wise person is a man that knows how to apply knowledge in his situation. Never, as Christians, never when you are rebuked or when you are taught wisdom, Never get disappointed. Because the Bible says you are wise people. You know, 1 Corinthians 1.30 says Christ is what? Wisdom. Christ is our wisdom. So Christians that are born again, who has Christ in them, are wise people. Tell your neighbor, I'm wise. I'm wise. Say, I'm very wise. I'm very wise. Now, when such a person's corrected, a wise person's corrected, watch what the Bible says. He says, Instruct a wise man, he will get wiser still. In other words, you get sharper in life. In other words, you become more potent in life. You understand? Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Just teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. Now, let me read, you don't have to turn there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 30. It says, but of him... Oh, I tell you, after this service, you're going to go home loaded. (laughs) 
Some of you, your course is changing now. You came into the service confused. You are going to leave this place knowing accurately what you're going to do. You understand? Some of you may have come in, you know, not so bright in your face. When you leave the service today, but listen, what I'm preaching to you, God's going to give you an answer in every situation. That's what I prayed for you. That while you will be listening to me teaching you, you will know exactly what to do, where to go, which direction. If you have several directions, God will say, this is the way. Hallelujah. You understand? Some of you are sitting here thinking, well, things have abruptly came to an end for me. Or challenges arose against me. See what Jesus said. He says, the thief cometh not but to steal, kill and destroy. Watch the words of Jesus. He says, but I've come to give you life. He didn't end there. He says, and life abundantly to the full. Oh boy. If you are empty today, you are going to go full. <laughs> you understand? Because Jesus said, he says, I've come to give you life abundantly, more abundantly. In other words, life to the full, overflowing. My cup runneth over. You understand? People may have tried to destroy you. They may, some of them may have written you off. I'm here, I've got good news for you. Christ has come to give you direction. He's going to lead you accurately in wisdom. You understand? Boy, you're going to shine brighter and brighter and brighter. Hallelujah. Sit down a minute. In 1 Corinthians 1.30, he says, But of him, i.e. in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom. See? You cannot as a Christian say, I lack wisdom. No. You know, they quote that famous scripture in the, in the book of Isaiah that says, well, God's ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. Yes, when the prophet Isaiah spoke those words, it was prior to the coming of Jesus. Now that you are born again and received Jesus Christ, He lives in you. Oh boy. <laughs> now the lights are on. I'm not talking about academic knowledge. I'm not talking about scientific knowledge. I'm not talking about empirical knowledge. I'm not talking about experiential knowledge. I'm speaking about the fruitness of God. Hey, the wisdom of Christ in me, loaded in my spirit. That means when I sleep, God shows me which way to go. <laughs> when I have multiple decisions to choose from, he tells me, don't go left, go right. While others say, go left, God says, go right. It's the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Watch what he says. He says, but of him, i.e. in Christ Jesus, who of God has made unto us wisdom, Sophia, <laughs> and righteousness. Boy, I'm the righteousness of God. Don't feel condemned. You are the righteousness of God. You stand before Him, you know, justified. You stand before Him just as if you've never sinned. You are accept God loves you. Listen, brothers and sisters in Christ, God loves you. Oh, you didn't catch it yet. I said this is the announcement. God loves you. <laughs> what an announcement. What an announcement. What an announcement. You may be struggling with a few things. It does not matter. You might be, you know, pressed in a corner. It does not matter. You may feel rotten on the inside because of the circumstances and pressure. But the announcement is, Jesus loves you. Hallelujah. Wow. See, that's why I don't care what people think about me. I'm accepted in the beloved. You understand? I'm only concerned about what God thinks about me. And if He loves me, boy, I love myself. Do you love yourself? Tell someone, love yourself. 
You t- tell someone you're beautiful. You are beautiful. Or I tell someone else you are handsome. You are handsome. Ooh, you are shining. You are shining. Say, say, I can hardly look at you, you are shining. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Look, the Bible says you are made in the image and likeness of God. Hallelujah. See, I'm not preaching a sermon to you. I'm preaching out of my spirit. It's things that I got. Oh boy. (laughs) It's stuff that I got on the inside. (laughs) You understand? Boy, I'm loaded. Oh, you are loaded. You are the healed of the Lord. Hallelujah. See, some people may have come in sick here. Now that's what they say. But according to God, you are healed. You are the healed of the Lord. You are not going to be healed. Listen to me carefully. You're not going to be healed. According to the Lord's word, by his stripes, ye were healed. So when God looks at you, He does not see you in a wheelchair. He does not see you with a crutch. He does not see you with cancer. He sees you healed. You understand? See, it's not something new. It's a discovery of yourself and the Word. See, see, the, the Bible tells us the Word of God is a mirror. It's a mirror. This, this word is a mirror. In other words, as you read it, as you study it, as you look at it, you gaze and see yourself. <laughs> I look at this, it says, instruct a wise man. And he'll be wiser still. I say, oh Lord, I'm a wise man. I cannot make foolish mistakes. I cannot go foolish ways. Boy, I'm wise. Teach a righteous man and he will add to his learning. I'm a righteous man. I'm a wise man. You are a wise man. You are a wise woman. Oh boy. Hallelujah. All right, sit down a minute. I say I'm t- talking about a prearranged life. A prearranged life. Uh huh. God has prearranged a life for you. Now, you may not be living that prearranged life. Let me explain to you why. Some of you have grasped some of it. Some of you have grasped different levels of it. Some of you have not grasped anything yet. Because you thought, some of you even think that perhaps God is against you. No. God is not against you. He's for you. Now please get this in your spirit. God is for you. God knew you before you were born. In other words, from before you were formed in your mother's womb, God knew you. In fact, there were so many people fighting, you know, seed fighting to be born, but God gave life to you. That means in the eons of time, God knew there would be a Johannes. Your mother may have tried to abort you, They might have tried to say you're a lot lamaki. For you that don't understand Afrikaans, you came late by mistake. They may have said all that, but they could not prevent you from being born. In the mind of God, you were created. I want you to understand this clearly. So that God created you, God thought about you. He knew you by name. He knew how you would look. He knew where you would be born. Now Ephesians tells us something very interesting. Turn to Ephesians chapter 2. I'll show you something there. Ephesians, the second chapter. This is powerful. I'm reading now from the NIV Bible. You got that? It says, chapter 2, verse number 10. It says, for we are God's workmanship. Oh, boy. (laughs) Please open your spirit and catch this. It says, we are God's workmanship. Created, watch this, created in Christ Jesus. 
Oh boy. We are God's workmanship. Brothers and sisters, you are seated here not because of your mother and father. <laughs> God kind of used them. But God was the one that created you. What he says, he says, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works. Now watch this. It says, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Now, now, now watch this. I'll read it to you in the Amplified Version. That same scripture. It says, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had be, watch watch the terms watch the phrase and watch the tenses it says for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained <laughs> see you're not an afterthought he thought about you so he says Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. That means if you being God's workmanship it means God prearranged your birth. God prearranged your growing up. God prearranged your whole life. Oh. See, you've got to get a hold of it. I'll tell you why. Why it's important to get a hold of this. Because if you don't, so when circumstances of life buffet you, you will have no anchor. Because you won't know where you come from. Now, very important. If you don't know where you're coming from, you won't know where you're going to. Confusion will be your portion in life. Now, understand this now. He says... God's word here says in Ephesians, it says you are God's workmanship. You are crafted by God. You are made delicately by God. Oh boy. He saw you. He gave you life. He's prearranged. Now, 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 let me explain to you why it is important for you to get this. Because if you can understand and grasp that God prearranged your life, that means everything you will ever need in life, He has already prearranged that. <laughs> okay, okay, sit down a minute. Turn to Genesis. Genesis chapter 2. Let's see, I'll show you something. Genesis chapter 2. Something powerful here. Oh boy, I was excited when I was looking at this last night. Genesis chapter 2 verse 8. Watch. You got it? You found it? If you don't have a Bible, borrow, borrow, look into your neighbor's Bible. So you can see what I'm saying is from the Bible. It says, verse 8, it says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put man that he had formed. Have you taken note of what I just read? God did not say he created Adam and then created the garden. Oh, come on here now. Get, put, your, put your torch on now. God's word says, watch, he says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east, in Eden. In other words, God planted paradise first. After he planted the garden, after he had constructed it, beautified it, he then created Adam. So that garden was created for Adam. All right, watch. It says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he, and there he put man that he had formed. So he created the garden, then he created man, then he took Adam and placed him in the garden. Everything that Adam needed, or 
right? You're getting it. You're getting it. You're getting it. See, I got it. I'm just trying to get you to get it, right? Okay. It says, Now the Lord God had planted a garden in the east in Eden, and there he put man he had formed. And he put the man, yeah, he put the man that he had formed, and the Lord God made, watch this. He didn't make one type of tree. He made a variety of trees. And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground. Trees that were pleasing to the eye and good for food. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. He put stuff in Adam's life that would beautify his life. Stuff that was pleasing to the eye. And then he created food. Oh, come on, yeah. He created food. Watch. See, you, you, so many of you have read that scripture. You're just not reading it like the way I'm reading it. I'm just showing you the, the deepness and the depth of God's word. See, it says, uh, And the Lord God made all kinds of trees grow out of the ground, trees that were pleasing to the eye for Adam. And what? And good for food. And in the middle of garden were the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And a river watering the garden flowed from Eden, and there it was separated into four headwaters. The name of the first is Pishon, which means dispersive. It winds through the entire land of Havilah, where there is gold. <laughs> oh, come on here. Are you, are you, are you awake? Watch, the first river was called dispersive. In other words, there was enough to disperse. And then, and then look, look at that. It says, uh, it winds through the entire land of Havilah where there is gold. The gold of that land is good, aromatic resin, and onyx are also there. The name of the second river is called Gion, which actually means paradise. It winds through the entire land of Cush. The name of the third river is Tigris. It runs along the east side of Ashur. And the fourth river is Euphrates, which actually means rushing, rushing, rushing. That means there's a life in it. Out of your bellies. Rush out. <laughs> uh, are you catching what I'm saying? Now, now watch, watch verse 15. Now, this is very important. The Lord God took the man, and your Bible's a little bit different because I'm reading from the NIV, but basically it's the same thing. It says, The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden. Now watch this now. Very important. Very important. Don't lose me now. God first created the garden. Amen. Then he brought Adam. Amen. He created the garden for Adam. Watch. He put trees pleasing to the eye. Also for food. And he put rivers there. And I gave you the name of the rivers. Paradise, rushing, you know. And then he put Adam there and he said to Adam, watch what he said to Adam. He said to Adam, he says, um, work it and take care of it. That's all he said to Adam. He says, work it and take care of it. I don't know exactly what it says for in, your, in your King James Version. Same thing. It says, work it, take care of it. But now watch this, very important. Adam was born into a pre-arranged life. This is big, you don't lose me. Open up your spirit to catch what I'm saying. Now when God created you, when you were born, I see we didn't know this stuff. That's why we have the preaching of God's word and the teaching of God's word. So you can comp comprehend, you can catalambano the word. <laughs> you, you understand? You can get a hold of the rhema so it will change your life. Now watch. 
The day you were born, I'm not talking about born again, the day you came into this earth, everything has been prearranged for you. It's just that you did not have the knowledge. All the money you need in life. <laughs> See, watch, watch, watch. Sit down a minute. You were gazing at the wrong thing. You wives, you were gazing at your husband's wallets. You were gazing at the wrong thing. Because you thought this man can pay your bills. You did not know that it was not this man that would pay your bills. God prearranged a life for you. You are looking at your job as your source of income. It's your tent making. God's blessed you with it. But brother and sister, if that company closed down, you'll get a job at a bigger company. You understand what I'm saying? So don't, although you appreciate that job, you appreciate that company, you appreciate that business God's put in your hands, but don't gaze Gaze at the word of God. The prearranged life is in the word of God. You understand? So yes, you are thankful. You are thankful for the job. And you should be a good steward. Take care of the job. You know, work well and be a faithful steward. But your mind now has been changed to know God prearranged a life for me. Brother, you take away something from me, I do not care. Are you? Did you catch what I said? Because everything's been prearranged. The money I need is prearranged. The people I need is prearranged. <laughs> everything's been prearranged. The houses you need has been prearranged. That's why don't be depressed. You may have left a house, you're getting a bigger one. You understand what I'm saying? You may have lost a car, you're getting a better car. Because your, your, your source is not the car, your source is not the house, your source is not the money. You have a prearranged life. That's why to a Christian, Poverty is not the way. God has... I mean, how can poverty be a way? When God did not put one tree, He put many trees in the Garden of Eden. And He said to Adam, Look, these are pleasing to your eyes. And here's food for you. Paradise was created for Him. Now forget about the fall, because you know, Christ already sorted that out. So without going into theology now, you know what the first Adam failed to do, the second Adam did. So in Christ, you now when you were born again, listen carefully, when you were born again, you came into your inheritance. You became an heir in Christ Jesus. Everything has been prearranged in your life. You cannot lack. You cannot be poor. You cannot suffer. You just can't. It's not in His will. <laughs> Ooh, you understand? You understand? There's life flowing in me. There's life in my spirit. I mean, there's wealth in me. I am his workmanship. How can, listen, sit down a minute. How can God create you and leave you penniless? Oh, no, sir. How can God create you and bring you into this world and not provide for you? Oh, it's going to get better now, I'm telling you. Hallelujah. And the Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden and to work it and take care of it. You see, uh, maybe I'll just look at a footnote here. When you get born again, when you are born again, and you have the born again experience, and you have that abundant life, that overflowing life in you, your job is to take care of it. And protect it at all costs. Oh, come on here. He didn't tell Adam's neighbor who came by and by, take care of Adam's garden. He said to him, you take care of it. So once you have the born again life, this eternal life, you take care of it. 
Watch what you hear. Watch what you are seeing. Watch what you are touching. You understand? Take care of it. If there's a weed, brothers and sisters, if it's fear, take the weed out, throw it away. If it's doubt, take the weed out, throw it away. If it's anything that comes to intimidate you, deal with it. It's your garden. You've got a miracle garden. <laughs> you have too much inside of you. You are loaded. There is something in your spirit. You understand? You know, listen, don't worry about what you are seeing. You might have two dresses hanging in a wardrobe. You might have two suits hanging in the wardrobe. That is not the end of your story. Your story has just begun. This is only the first chapter that is written. You may feel, I've lost everything. I've lost my house. I've lost my family. I've lost my wealth. I've lost everything. No, you have, no, you have just started life. Amen. See, it depends about your perspective. Because now you know God has prearranged everything for you. Did he not know on a certain date, at a certain time, this thing will happen? So has he not provided for you now? Oh, come on here. A prearranged life. A life that is loaded. A life that is beautiful. Listen, God will take care of, of you till the end of your day on earth. Do you believe what I'm saying? I, I can never be poor. <laughs> I can never be in lack and in want. I refuse to be sick. I refuse to be in want. You understand? And that's your portion too. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Now let me, let me read you some scriptures here and uh, share with you. Now Hebrews, you don't have to turn there because this is too many. Hebrews 10.38 says what? The just shall live by faith. So if God has got a prearranged life for you and everything is there, all he's asking you to do is be a child of faith. Walk by faith. Believe him. That's why the Bible tells you in Hebrews 10, 38, the just shall live by faith. You're a product of faith. You were born by faith. Born of faith. The Bible says unto every man has given a measure of faith. You have faith. Tell someone next to you, you have faith. Some Christians make a mistake by looking for faith. No, you have faith. It's a measure of faith in you. Grow that measure of faith. Watch this. Then he says here in 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. Don't look about what you have, how many bills you've got to pay, who's thrown you out the house, who's disowned you, who's divorced you, who's alienated you, Who's cursed you? Brothers and sisters, that's walking by sight. You're walking by faith. Tell yourself you're too beautiful. <laughs> you understand? If someone's walked away from you, don't look at it and say it's my loss. Say it's their loss. They did not know what they had. Hallelujah. You understand? Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Abundant life. This is life. I'm loaded on the inside. Watch this. In Hebrews 11 6, it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and is a reward of them that diligently seek him. In other words, as a child of God, you have to watch and look at everything from a standpoint of faith. When you look at your business, you see it going higher. When you look at your sales figures, it's going higher. You look at whatever you want from God, it's there. Are you understanding what I'm saying? A prearranged life. Say it's a prearranged life. Hallelujah. Now, 2 Corinthians 4, 18 says, Look not at the things which are seen. <laughs> are you catching this? Don't look at the doctor's report. Don't look at what they're saying. By the end of the year, you'll be retrenched. Don't look at the economy and say, Well, by that date. Listen, even the economy is working on your favor. Amen. Drive a big car. You know, when you drive a big car, and you pull in by the garage. And this is the truth. 
they'll come to you and say, well, what is this? You, you tell them, well, it's a V8. It's happened to me many times. You say it's a V8. Oh, you shouldn't have bought this. Isn't it a guzzler? I said, look, if I can drive the car, I can fuel it. Why would I buy a car that I cannot put petrol in there? I'm not living by the economy. Oh, boy. <laughs> you understand? If there's no money in the pocket, we'll create a fish with money in its mouth. I know how to do that. Hallelujah. Oh, boy. I can frame my world with my words in my mouth. You understand? What are you talking about? Petrol in the car? That's why some of you Christians, you have cars. God has given you a car. Don't pickle it. Don't pickle it. Don't use it like, well, you know, is this for me, my family, no one else. No. Use it for God's word. Amen. Use it. Open it up. I can't tell you how many cars I've wrote, written, you know, pushed to the ground in God's work. But as I went along, I got more and more and more. Are you listening to me? Don't be a miser. You're a steward. God's given you something. Use it for the kingdom. Don't get attached to things. The same God that gave you one will give you more. There was a time I only had one car. Now I have several cars. Oh, come on here. Oh boy. There was a time we wanted to buy the church, the first church, you know, we bought. We drew money. Pastor Zubaid and I drew money for our personal account. We bought the church and renovated it and built on all with our personal money, not the church money. When we were buying the building in North Coast Road, someone said to me, he said, Pastor, don't sell your house. Um, we, we'll loan you the money to buy the building. And uh, I was driving one day from Gateway, driving home. And the Lord spoke to me very clearly. He said, look, the man promised you the money. Don't take his money. Don't worry about it. You won't come to pass. Sell the house. So as the Lord spoke to my spirit, I'm driving in the car. I turned around to Pastor Zubaydah. I said, you know what? I said, the Lord just told me, sell the house. She, she turned around. Thank God for a godly woman. Amen. You know, if it was another woman, she said, oh, my house. Ooh. Thank God for a godly woman. She turned around. She said, she said, if God told you sell it, sell it. Boy, within a week we sold the house and we had the money to buy the building in North Coast Road. Now, <laughs> I own three houses. <laughs> I, I, it's a truth. It's a truth. In one year, that's what I own, three houses plus the building in North Coast, plus the building here. But you see, you see, there was a time in my life I had to sow a seed. What are you holding on to? Let it go. God has spoken to you so many times. Some people have lost their joy because God has spoken to you but have not let go. God has spoken to you to sow a seed. You say, I rebuke you, devil. In the name of Jesus, get thee behind me. Well, when you talk like that, everything else gets behind you too. All your blessings get behind you. Then I realized something as I started to, you know, fiddle with the things of God. In other words, learn how faith's working and growing in my faith. I started to realize something. There is a pre-arranged life. Let me explain it. Let me explain it to you. This building was built in 1970. 1970. How many years ago is that? Time has gone, but it's okay. You don't mind, I just go on a little bit more, right? How, how many years? 37 years. 37, 38. Now, when the owner built this, it ran as a cinema for one or two years. Then it closed down. Then a church hired it. I remember this many years back. I came to a service here many many years back and from that time onwards when the church moved out this thing shut down oh listen to me this place shut down it was closed it was in a derelict condition for 35 34 years from then 
Then another church bought this property. <laughs> Two or three years back, they bought this property from a lady, a Hindu lady, and she passed on. And they didn't know what to do with it, so they just had this place shut up. Then I spoke to Pastor Wesley the one day, and I said to him, go and find out if they're selling the building. And at first, they were not, not really selling the building. Are you listening carefully? Now, I started to ask myself a question. I mean, 35 years. Who was this building waiting for? <laughs> that I came along last year, we bought this building. I said, Lord, all right, that's not the end of it. The building we bought on North Coast Road was owned by a Portuguese man for many years in the rent business of it. A Christian man purchased it. And he was trying all sorts of things. He was trying to maybe make it into an office, a conference center. He was trying so many things, but everything failed and failed. And that place shut down for five years. Here came along me. Let me share with you how I came to know about the building in a dream. God told me about a certain man, which I met on that Saturday, and he told me that the building was up for sale, or the owner was trying to sell it. When I picked up the phone and called the owner, he said to me, he says, look, who told you I'm selling the building? I'm not selling the building. I said, look, I, 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 I need the building. <laughs> he says, I'm not selling. I said, I need it. <laughs> so we went and saw him and negotiated the whole thing, and then we bought the building. Then he said something strange to me the one day. He said, I don't know why I bought this building. I said to him, <laughs> listen, 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 listen. I'm trying to show you something. I said to him, sir, I know why. You bought it for me. <laughs> Are you listening? Then the building in Avoca, we bought that building. Listen to me. When we negotiated that building, it was already sold to another group. It was a pastor that owned the building that was in, in Phoenix. And he had sold it to the other guy. So when I went to him and said, you remember, and I said, we want to buy the building. He said, look, sorry, I can't sell it to you. He said, I've already sold the building. So we went back to church, a few of us, and we started to pray. You remember, we prayed in the church. And we said, Lord, that building's ours. No group's buying it. So those guys, after two months, fell with the money. They couldn't come up with the money. I got a call from the pastor. He says, look, if you want this building, it's yours. Come and give me a deposit. You can have it. Aha. Uh -huh. That, when I went and bought that building, the, the shrubs and the grass and the, and the courtyard and the thing was this high. This high. We had, actually had to do that to make a pathway to get to the building. Then I asked myself a question. I said, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Listen carefully. He said, son, everything you'll ever need for your ministry. has already been pre-arranged. He says, if I can keep a building 35 years for you, I kept it just for you. I kept the building in uh, North Coast Road just for you. He said, the building in Avoca, just for you. So I said, Lord, where are the people going to come from? He said, don't worry. He says, I've got people just for you. So I kind of now got in touch with this pre-arranged life. Are you with me? Can you see how God pre-arranged your life? If there are businesses, it's waiting just for you. You'll buy it at the right time and they won't even know why they're selling it to you. There are relatives that will pass away and there's inheritance just for you. Because God knows that you are kingdom minded and you're going to use the money for the kingdom. You understand? Your children may be growing up. They may be looking confused now, not making the right decisions. But God's got the specific timing that one day when they come to their senses and grab their hold of their destiny, God's got things waiting for them. Oh, come on here. He's got everything planned for you. 
Okay, sit down a minute. I'll give you one last scripture. Oh, I should have preached this for two sermons. He's got everything planned for you. A pre-arranged life. Some of you are sitting here, you're wondering now, where are you going to stay? God's got a building for you. God's got a house for you. God's got a flat for you. God's got a car for you. He's got a job for you. He's got money. I told you, stop looking at your husband. Stop looking at your wife. Stop looking at your boss. They are not your source. You are the workmanship of Christ. Now, I'm not saying disrespect them. I'm not saying that. Love your husband. Love your wives. Appreciate them. I'm just saying God is bigger than them. You understand? Joking one day, I said to my wife, if you don't give me food, God will send me the ravens to feed me. <laughs> one more big scripture. Matthew chapter 21. Live your life like this. Hallelujah. Prearranged life. This is a big one, right? Are you ready? Last scripture and I close. This is a big one. In verse chapter 21, verse 1. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethapage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with a colt by her. <laughs> Think about what Jesus was saying. Now use your imagination. Let it run. Jesus, I mean, this was now just before he rode into Jerusalem on a donkey. You know, and then everyone shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, hail to the king. And uh, Jesus had need for a donkey, right? So he tells two of his disciples, he says, listen, go there. He says, you'll see a donkey and a colt. He says, untie it. Listen carefully. He says, untie it. And he says, bring it. Now watch. He says, and if anyone says anything to you, Tell him. <laughs> I told you this is a big one. He says, if anyone asks you anything, you tell him, the Lord has need of them. Watch. That's what he says here. He says, if anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them. And he will send them right away. This took, are you, are you catching this? So he says, this took place to fulfill that was spoken through the prophets. Say to the daughter of Zion, see your king comes to you gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt and a fall of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. I like that. They brought the donkey and the colt. See Mitsubishi cult, where they get the name from? Yeah, in the Bible. That was, that was Jerusalem's 4x4 four four at that time. <laughs> it says, The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. And a very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of them or those followed shouted, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the highest. And when Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? That's what they'll ask about you. When God starts to promote you, and when you start to get loaded, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They will say, Who is this? Watch. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. Now watch, listen carefully. Catch this. Catch this carefully. Jesus was on a mission. He was on an assignment. The assignment was what? To lead the disciples, preach the gospel of the kingdom, and then ultimately offer his life as a sacrifice. It was an assignment. Now that he was on assignment, water turned to wine. 
Things that were dead came to life. You understand? The sick were healed. Demons were cast out. Donkeys were produced. For a mission. The Bible didn't say who owned them. He didn't say he borrowed them. He said he took them. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Jesus said the disciples took them. All right, listen to this. Listen to this. Everything you'll ever need in life has been provided for you. Uh, let me tell you why before you get excited. Let me tell you why. Because Jesus went away. Then he said, he said, all authority has been given to you. He says, go and preach the gospel. He says, go and heal the sick. Go and do the work of the kingdom. And now that assignment that Jesus was, just hang on a minute. The assignment that Jesus was busy with has now been transferred to you as a Christian. You got that now? So, everything that Jesus ever needed had been prearranged for him, even the donkey and the cult. Everything in life has now been prearranged for you. What is it you, what is it you looking for? The money you need, brothers and sisters, it's in the Word. Whatever you need, it's there. It's for you. It's for your taking. Hallelujah. There's no more suffering, no more lack, no more poverty, no more sickness. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Say no, 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 no. Say no to the devil. Say yes to Jesus. Aha. Uh -huh. The word worked for Jesus. The word works for you. You have a prearranged life. If there's a cult you need, it's produced. If there's a donkey you need, it's produced. If there's money you need, it's produced. If there's a house you need, it's... Listen, God has got everything arranged. Your life is arranged. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh boy, did you catch what I said? Did you catch it with your spirit? Say, I cannot lack. I cannot be in poverty. I cannot be in want. I'm just so glad. I know now, God prearranged my life. I have a good life, a beautiful life. I'm loaded, I'm blessed, I'm healed. I'm so, so blessed. Tell your neighbor, I'm blessed. Tell someone else, I'm blessed. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Don't ever ask a foolish question, where's the money coming from? <laughs> no, no. The money is there. You just got to believe, you see. Just believe and walk. Walk in the Word. Walk by faith. Walk by faith. Everything you ever need in this life is produced for you. I've made up my mind, I can never suffer again. I made up my mind, my life is beautiful. I made up my mind, everything I'll ever need has been provided. As God pro provided for Adam, He made a garden just for Adam. One man, before Eve came. Just this one dude. Just one guy. Trees, food, paradise. Not one river. Four rivers. You think maybe these guys learnt all of these water skiing now? I think Adam was doing it back there. The waters were rushing. He might have got on a log and said, Woo! <laughs> you understand? He had a good life. He had a prearranged life. You are God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Everything you need in life has been prearranged. Wow. Say wow. All right. While you're standing, I want to ask, is there anyone here that does not know Jesus Christ as his or her personal Lord and Savior? Or you've received Jesus Christ at one time or the other, but somewhere along the line you just went a bit back, got called to the things of God, and you'd like to say this morning, I'd like to accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. Let me see your hand quickly. If that's you, don't let this opportunity pass you by. Come. If that's you, just raise your hand so I can pray. I see a hand. I see a hand. Sir, come to the front. Please come, give them a hand. Come, come to the front. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Come forward. Is there anyone here in this section? 
You want to say yes to Jesus? Hallelujah. Look at that. Come on, give the Lord a great hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Is there anyone else here that wants to say yes to Jesus? You want to not let this opportunity pass you by. But you want to have a good life, a life that means something. Hallelujah. I implore you, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Your whole life will change. Your destiny will change. I mean, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. Give the Lord a great hand. Hallelujah. Brian, I'm, I'm going to ask you. I'm going to ask you in a minute now to lead them to Christ and then also welcome all our visitors. But before I go, I want to bless you. Lift your hands towards me. Father, I bless each one here in the name of Jesus. I bless them. Hallelujah. May life come to them. May the glory of the Lord rest upon them. May the grace of the Lord increase in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for each one. They're going from here with destiny. Lord God, they're going to be led. They're going to have the wisdom of God, fruitness of God in their lives. This week will be a beautiful week for them. They have purpose, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I speak destruction to the works of the devil over their lives. And I speak blessings over them. I say you are blessed in the name of Jesus. You're blessed coming in and you're blessed going out. Your home is blessed. Your business is blessed. Your workplace is blessed in the name of the Lord. God has prearranged a life for you. Your life is beautiful. That is my words to you. If anyone has spoken destructive words over your life, I cancel that now. When they have said you are useless, I say to you, you are useful. If they say to you, you are ugly, I say to you, you are beautiful. If they say to you, you are unproductive, I say to you, you are the most productive person on the earth. If they say to you, you lack wisdom, I say to you, you have the wisdom of God, the knowledge of God. If they say to you that you were poor and nothing good will come out of your life, I say to you, no, a thousand times no. God has blessed you with all spiritual blessings and physical blessings. You are loaded. You are wealthy. Your needs are met. Your cupboards are full. You have finances to pay every bill. In the name of Jesus, you will not lack any good thing. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Give the Lord a great hand. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise God. All of you, 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 this is the first time you're receiving Christ. You have received Him, but you went away in yourself. You too, in yourself, first time. First time, in yourself, in yourself, in yourself. Wow. Let me share this with you before I go. Brian's going to lead you in prayer now, pray of salvation. Let me share this with you. You are making the best decision of your life. To live without Christ is a life that is so depressing, so aimless. The devil gives you short-term pleasure, but he gives you long-term misery. But Jesus Christ will give you peace day upon day, month upon month, and year after year. That's what God, man, man was created to have Christ in his heart. You, you're with me? This is the best decision you're making. Your life is going to be beautiful now. It's going to have meaning now. You understand what I'm saying? Wow. Give them another hand. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Praise you, Lord. As we will lead them, who needs prayer? You know, you've come into the service very depressed. You've come into the service being confused upset perhaps you've got challenges in your life and you don't know which way to go and just so many things have happened in your life and you want God to just do something for you can I see your hand if that's you please come to the front come quickly to the front I just want to ask everybody just to exercise a little bit of patience we're almost done but this is important these are people's lives I want you to stand on the left of me hallelujah thank you Lord Jesus thank you I mean look at how many of them Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 
I want to share this with all of you that have come now for prayer. You are special. Amen. God brought you here for a reason. You are not here by mistake. If you've come this morning just to hear these words, then Christ got something special for you from today. He'll change your life. We'll give you direction. It's not by pastor's power. It was by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says the Holy Spirit is here. He's your comforter. He'll lead you. He'll guide you. He'll teach you. He'll comfort you. He'll give you direction. That is the presence of Christ by the Holy Spirit. From today, different things are going to happen to you. Things for your good. God's going to take away that depression, that loneliness, all of the things that are hurtful. Just let it go. Life is too beautiful for you. Don't waste another day worrying. The Bible says, be anxious for nothing, but by all things, by prayer and supplication, casting your cares upon the Lord, for He careth for you. God loves you. So now lift up your hands, that group, as I pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, as I pray for all of these precious people, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every evil spirit, over every oppressive spirit, over every demonic spirit, over every suicidal spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I command you out in Jesus' name. Let go of God's people in the mighty name of Jesus. I command you, let go in Jesus' name. And I bless you because you have a sound mind, that you have direction in your life, that God will lead you, God will comfort you. The Bible says He's a God of comfort. He comforts you now. You have the wisdom of God. You have direction in your life. Everything that has troubled you and oppressed you has now left you. You are free in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Listen, from amongst you here, there's one person that was contemplating suicide. Let me share this with you. The Lord says, I must tell you, suicide is not a way out. It is not an option. He's given you that life to live it to the full. And that life is worth living because there are many people who will be touched by your life. If you will end your life, then that means you are selfish because you will not help other people. But if you live your life, then other people's lives will be touched by your life. So suicide is not an option. You understand? Doing wrong things is not an option. Doing evil things is not an option. When you do evil things to enrich yourselves, you will even lose everything. But if you trust the Lord, if you walk in His Word, God will enrich you through the Word of God, through the presence of Jesus in your life. And He'll make you great. You understand? Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So I bless you in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. I bless your family, your home. I bless everything you have. When you go away from here, joy comes into your life. The joy of the Lord. That maketh rich and adds no sorrow with it. The joy of the Lord fills your heart, fills your mind in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. So I bless you now. Give them all a great hand. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. God is good, right? I love you very much. Hallelujah. Have a great day. But don't go now. Brian's going to lead them. And then you're going to do the... Where's Brian? You're going to do the announcements. And then you're going to say the grace. What I'd like you to do is when we say the grace, we're going to put up the words. We've got the words. We're going to put up the words in the projector. And so when they say the grace, I'd like the whole church to repeat the grace as you read it up there. And as Adrian, Pastor Adrian will lead you, all right? God bless you. Come, Brian. Hallelujah. Or is it a child for prayer? Okay. Give me a second, please. Are, are you the family that your child is not well? You got a handkerchief for me to pray over? Hallelujah. How are you, sir? That gentleman there. Brother Cliff, what is his name? Jack. How are you? Good to see you. Praise God. He's accepted Christ, right? And is he, is he filled with the Holy Spirit yet? No. Oh, don't worry. One of the days... You'll be filled with the Holy Spirit. And then we'll teach you a little bit more of the Word and you'll walk out of that wheelchair. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. What's wrong with your child? How old is your child? 
Wow. And your child has what? And is in which hospital? Well, you came. That means you believe, right? You, 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 are you Hindus? Listen, they came believing God. Look at their faith. And uh, Christ uh, loves you very much. I must tell you that. And the fact that you have come, it means you activated your faith. You've done something. So God's going to give you a miracle. As I pray over this handkerchief, Lord, I remember how aprons and handkerchiefs were taken out of the Apostle Paul, Lord, and laid on the sick. And Father, your word says, demons cried out with a loud voice. In the name of Jesus, Lord, people were healed. And so, Lord, I exercise the same authority. As I lay hands on this handkerchief, I curse that cancer. You foul spirit of cancer, in this child, I rebuke you. And I adjure you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Go in Jesus' name. As this handkerchief is placed upon the child, Lord, the healing anointing will flow into those bones, will flow into the flesh, will flow into the blood. And Lord God, the child will be healed in the name of Jesus. I give you praise and worship in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. How many believe there's something on this handkerchief? Come here, North. Stand there. Look, there's something here now. I've prayed on it. So I want you to look at this lady, see? I'm going to see. Watch that. Watch. There's power in that handkerchief. So I did that to illustrate to you because you, you're not church people, so you don't know these things. You're not church. Okay. But it doesn't matter. I want, you, I want to demonstrate that to you, that when we prayed, something came on this handkerchief. It's the power of the Holy Spirit. When you take this to the hospital, you believe that in your heart. Don't say anything negative. Just go there and you lay this on the child and you believe with all your heart and God will wrought a miracle for you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Brian, would you lead them? God bless you. Hallelujah. Give him a great hand today. Praise the Lord. Go ahead, Brian.